Yo, 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 it's your boy Dario8676 here, bringing you more Let's Play Back to the Future Episode 2, Get Tannin. And uh, we're back in 1931 again, as we're trying to figure out why our time period of 1986 changed, and why the Tannins are powerful, hungry, and the gang rules the pretty much Hill Valley. I don't know, so... That's what we're here to f try to figure out. Um, for some some crazy reason, um, what's his name? Kid Tannen was never arrested, and uh, we're here to try to figure out why. Yep. So let's start with uh, talking to our good Pardon friend me, Edna. Sir. From the way you're dressed and your general aura of seediness, I can infer only one thing: you're heading for Tannen's speakeasy. Am I right? <laughs> well, yes. Uh, yeah. Can't you tell me the way? Down. Straight down. The last stop before the Inferno. <laughs> inferno? Holy crap. Unfortunately, I don't have the power to stop you, but I beg you to tarry here a few more seconds and listen to my song. Sure. Me, 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 me. You saved lost yourself. No more! <laughs> In heaven's name! Oh, sorry, Miss Strickland. <laughs> Just a little experimental prototype gone momentarily oh, awry. Shit. Mr. Brown, why is there a dog in that vehicle? Why? Well, well, to advance the human condition, of course. Of course. Hello, Harry. Harry? Harry. Mr. Callahan, what are you doing in My that My name is Michael Corleone, you jackass. It's just... Why I mean, can't look, the game I'm carry to over? To dress like a gangster without I named him Michael gangster. Corleone, not yeah. Harry Callahan. God Exciting. damn it. You'll have to give me an exclusive okay. sometime. Okay. Right now, I've got some souls to save. And you'll have to get an eyeful of my newest experiment. Let's You're check it out. Are about the rocket drill? Huh. Water over the bridge. I've moved on to bigger and better things. Come by the gazebo when you get a chance. I'll be setting up. You won't believe what Imi and I have been up to. Famous last words. All right. So where's <laughs> that last speakeasy? Words. We're not going to the speakeasy yet. We're going to talk to Mr. Emmett Brown. Harry, you're just in time. Have you been, buddy? How have you been, Emmett? I know I haven't seen you in a couple of months. I'm great, and I owe it all to you. Really? Yes. That argument I had with my father during our jet drill experiment gave me the incentive to finally quit that dreary court job. I've committed myself full time to a life of science. Nice. Thanks, thanks, man. So, uh, thanks for watching Einstein while I've been uh, away. It's been a pleasure. He's proven to be a surprisingly willing test subject, almost as if he's been working with me for years. <laughs> Crazy, like huh? What you doing, buddy? What's the story with the little car and all this equipment? Einstein and I are conducting a few experiments with this one-quarter scale model to work out a few hitches in my planned demonstration at the Hill Valley Expo in a couple of months. A radio-controlled car? No. Well, yes, but that'll be so much more than that. It will amaze the world. Keep in mind, people, this uh -huh. is 1931. What? So these I'll remote control cars did not Ready exist. To go, Einstein? Even though today's day, they actually have remote-controlled helicopters and stuff like that, which is pretty amazing. Watch this! Here we go! When this baby hits 23 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious cow flop. <laughs> nice. Here we go. It's pretty epic. Now, it's done. Get him out of here! Not to worry. <laughs> I've got a fail-safe eject mechanism around here someplace. God damn it, Doc. Always screwing everything up. See? Nothing to worry about. Nothing. I need... <laughs> he just dropped the dog off on the roof. <laughs> I'll go see if I can find something to help. Or someone. Or someone in bold. Uh... And then it points right at Elder Doc. I mean, isn't that kind of uh, kind of obvious there? Don't worry, Emmett. I'm sure you'll get it right someday. Oh, I'm not worried about that. Right now, I'm more concerned with Einstein. I know. You screwed everything up. You screwed it all up. Um, let's 
Let's see if there's any other What's information we can get of him. A couple months ago, I could swear she was making goo goo eyes at you. That was before my father had her stay sober society meeting thrown out of our house. Now she takes every opportunity she can get to snipe at me and my work. <laughs> it's very distracting. You know, that was kind of my fault there, so I apologize. Do you know anything about Trixie Trotter? It's the person we're trying to find out more about. You know anything about Trixie Trotter? The songbird of the Sierras? The nightingale of the north? The floozy of the foothills? Uh... Never heard of her. Man, I've definitely never snuck into tan and speakeasy to listen to her. Obviously, he's lying. Alright, that's enough. Well, I'll go off and see if I can get some help. You do that. I'll stay here and see if I can think of a way to get Einie off that ledge. Don't worry about Einie. Now... One thing I found interesting, and I actually saw this, uh, there's another, uh, let's play of this that's pretty much done, it's called, it's, uh, by Zack Scott Games, and he mentioned it in his let's play of this, and that is, this is Hill Valley of 1931, it's supposed to be, like, highly populated, and they're supposed to be, like, just a busy town all the time, and yet, it seems like there's only, like, a handful of people that live in Hill Valley, you know, it's so strange, most of them that we recognize, and there's, like, one guy that keeps walking in and out of that, uh, theater cool Frankenstein that we don't recognize so it's kind of weird it, it just seems like I wish I could talk to the game developers about that it's it's rather strange it's like they weren't really thinking with that I guess or maybe it was just too much work I don't know anyways let's see if we can get um our time doc hey doc how's the room it's a little cleaner than I would have imagined for a depression era flop house how are your investigations going well, we need your help, buddy. I haven't really made any progress with Trixie yet. Well, get out there and make some. If she doesn't blow the whistle on Kid tonight, he may never be brought to justice. Yep. So if she's the one that is responsible for putting him in jail. Why didn't you tell me I'd run into your younger self tonight? Because I don't remember being out here tonight. Clearly, your interactions with my younger self two months ago have slightly altered my personal timeline. I never have the nerve to perform public experiments like he's doing. No matter, those experiments will be forgotten once I've seen Frankenstein. Frankenstein? Yes. Right now, my younger self is fiddling around out there with rocket propulsion systems for his demonstration at the expo. The thing that'll kick off your scientific career. Exactly. Word. Exactly. Now, the rockets are a horrible idea, and I'll soon realize that they'll never work. But eventually, I'll wander into that movie theater and see Frankenstein and clear my mind. I've kept the ticket stub from that movie in my wallet ever since. See? Nice. Why? Because it's during this movie that I'll have the inspiration for my breakthrough at the expo. It doesn't have anything keep... to do with reanimating the dead, does it? Not the way you're thinking, no. But during that famous scene when Colin and Clive turned the wheel that raised that shrouded figure into the tower and that bolt of lightning struck, well... Let's just say more than one brain was reanimated that night. It's funny because they keep bolding um, this and that and stuff dealing with Doc seeing that movie Frankenstein. So I'm starting to think that while we're here to fix one thing, I'm just... Keep in mind, I never played this game before, but I'm honestly starting to think that... Why are Tannins always such jerks anyway? That something here uh, is going to oh, happen. Uh, rogue. That's going to screw up the timeline once again with maybe Doc never being able to see the movie or something. This is just a guess. I don't know if I'm right, but... Did you park the DeLorean? I hid it in a DeSoto lot. I don't know. We'll see what happens, I guess. should be safe in there. Hey, who did burn down Tannen's original speakeasy anyway? I still don't know. I'd really like to find out before we go home. I don't care. I never did get a straight answer about why he came back to 1931 in the first place. It's, uh, personal. When this is over, I'll tell you all about it. I'm gonna hold you to that, you know. Run through this way? Through Can this you explain me. all this? I'm I can't confused. speak right. It's very simple. In the original timeline, Timeline A, the speakeasy arsonist was never caught, creating one of Hill Valley's enduring historical mysteries. Okay. When I traveled back to 1931, I created Timeline B, right. in which I was misidentified as the arsonist and subsequently killed by Kit Tannen's goons. Einstein came with me, and somehow he ended up in the DeLorean when its failsafe mechanism triggered sending it back to 1986. Which is where I came in. Yep. Precisely. You traveled back to June 14, 1931, creating Timeline C, a world in which Carl Sagan wasn't rubbed out by Kid Tannen. But Arthur McFly was served for the subpoena. And shot by Kid Tannen's goons. Yes. 
So you jump back in time six hours, creating Timeline D, saving your grandfather's life, but somehow preventing Kit Tannen from meeting his date with justice. Which is why the Tannens were so powerful when we jumped back to 86. Uh-huh. So now we've returned to August of 1931, creating Timeline E. Jesus. In which, fingers crossed, we'll send Tannen to prison where he belongs. Got it? Sure. Good. One question. What? Can you explain all this? I'm confused. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Like I said before, it's just... Uh, we start realizing, I guess, and in the movies they start realizing too, towards Back to the Future 3, that... Just keep your head this low, whole, Doc. I'll this whole thing soon. is a mess. I'll keep an eye out for your grandfather. Wait a minute. Did I forget something? I think I forgot No. What are we supposed to do here? I thought I I thought I talked to him I think I missed something by accident But uh yeah it's, The whole thing is a mess And it seems like the more we time travel Hey Doc I could use a little help What's the problem? We gotta save Einstein Emmett's not having much luck Getting Einstein off the courthouse I'm not surprised Einstein's a smart dog But heights give him the willies What can we do? Hmm. I've got it. What? Just get my younger self distracted and I'll handle the rest. Okay. That's all I forgot to do. Just keep your head low, Doc. I'll keep an eye out. But yeah, again, basically, uh, the more we go back in time and travel, the more we screw stuff up. So even though we might ultimately fix, um, you know, the 1986 timeline or whatever. What the hell? I'm having issues walking here. Gotta get to the thing. Ah, uh, damn it. Why can't I walk that way? Whatever. Even though we might ultimately fix the our major problem um, with, uh, you know, the, the, the tannins is ruling everything with the iron fist, we might create another problem in the process, so we gotta be careful. Alright. Hey, Edna. Mr. Crockett, what can I do for you? What's going on with you and Emmett? The last time I saw you, you seemed to be kind of interested in him. That was before I belatedly realized that his agreement to host my Stay Sober Society was a clever ruse to ferry barrels of hooch to his so-called uh, laboratory. Yeah. Sorry about that. Now his very presence fills me with an irrepressible urge to pick at his philosophical and Calm intellectual down, foundations Edna. with every tool in my God, vocabulary. God, you're such a control freak. So you're not dating. Dating? <laughs> the mere thought of romantic involvement with that undisciplined techno-anarchist is preposterous. <laughs> Good. Why do you hate dogs so much? What have you got against dogs, anyway? They're smelly, rude, completely unable to take care of themselves, and frankly, they're not very bright. If I had my druthers, dogs would be banned from public places. It's not very nice. Harsh. It's a harsh world, Mr. Callahan. It's not Callahan, damn it. Hey, I got a hot lead for you. Oh, what is it? Mm. Would be inventor strands dog on courthouse. <laughs> Young scientist strands dog on courthouse roof. What? Look over there. Oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> that's messed up. Well, that's one way to Mr. distract them. Mr. Brown. Please, Miss Strickland, not now. Can't you see I've got a rather delicate situation on my hands at the moment? My trial run. Trial run? Public hazard, I call it. <laughs> and I'm sure my editor will agree. Calm down. This scientific enterprise of yours represents a clear oh, and present Doc, danger to public you know safety. represents a clear and present danger to public safety. Your singing voice. Damn. No need to get personal, Mr. Brown. Believe me, I have no intention of getting personal with you. I'm relieved to hear it. <laughs> Flying cars of all the ridiculous <laughs> things on me. But just imagine a world in which traffic jams and car crashes are a thing of the past. Well, I might be more inclined to listen to you if you were Flying cars are ridiculous. Meanwhile, there's a flying car on one roof and a stranded dog I'm on another. Sorry. I'm working on getting him down. <laughs> How'd you get down? Amazing. Clever dog. Well, fortune favors you tonight, but I warn you to be more careful in the future. Get out of my now, face. 
Out of get that rocket car Out of my back way. Down. Now to get the rocket done. Aini, we missed you, buddy. Hey, boy, how you doing? Good dog. Good dog, yeah. Hells yeah. Hey, have you seen Emmett? Edna, what? Nice song! What was that song you were singing earlier? <clears throat> Do you like it? I wrote it myself. It really gets the toes tapping at the Stay Sober Society meetings. Although I suppose that could be the shakes. Would no. you like to hear it again? I guess. Uh, sure. I knew if I waited long enough, somebody would request it. You say you've lost your self-respect, but you should <laughs> so care. Cringe. It's not too late to redirect and start to care. Don't despise the good and pure. Time to rise up from the sewer. Wash off all that foul manure. Show the world you care. You should care. You should care. Okay. What people Stop. think of you. I'm sorry I asked you to sing Uncle it. Uncle that you could name reclaiming. Your good name is what you ought to do. You should care. You should care. If your reputation is in disrepair, it's not going to hurt you to reclaim your virtue you for, for you. you. Catchy. You really think so? Yeah, it's uh got a good hook to it. Ugh. One needs a good hook if one is fishing for souls. Don't ever sing again. Ever. See ya. Keep fighting the good fight. Yeah! Yeah, boy! Where the hell are we supposed to go now? One must ask. Where are we going now? Why not try the door? What door? The door to the speakeasy in the alley behind the soup kitchen! We must go to the soup kitchen! Aw, oh, yeah. How do I get there? Well, not that way. They won't let me go that way. Jerks. How do we get to the soup kitchen? The soup kitchen? The soup kitchen? How do we get to the soup kitchen? All the way around. The controls are so derpy. No, that's the courthouse. That's not where I want to go. Damn it! Duck! 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 Ugh. How do we get there? They like ban me from going to so many places that... Look at this. I don't even know where I'm going. Wait a minute, there you go. What the hell? I just noticed that. What the hell is he doing up there? Emmett. No, no, no time for chit-chat. I've got a rocket car to recover. Emmett! You get down from there before you hurt yourself! Hurt myself? <laughs> You're far too cautious, Miss Strickland. Ah, uh, yay, yeah, yay. Yeah. The speakeasy entrance. I think it's over here. Naturally, we have a loading screen. Well, you know, ex expected. Expected. What can I say? Who sent you? Ulysses S. Grant. What did you bring me? Meat and potatoes. What's the word? Words are for wimps. Interesting. Okay, guys, well, that's all the time we have for this episode. Uh, I'm not going to say it again for this part of Back to the Future. See you next time for more Episode 2 as we try to make our way into the speakeasy. Later, guys.